Malcolm Ripken. What do you think of the Commonwealth's core strengths? I think there are uh, remarkable strengths because, you know, it's the uniqueness of the Commonwealth. There are organisations which cover the whole world, like the United Nations, obviously. There are those which cover only specific regions, like the European Union or ASEAN or the African Union. But the Commonwealth uniquely has countries from every part of the world, every ethnic group, every geographical location, with certain common values, common historical ties, but that provides an uh, unprecedented opportunity for dialogue of a kind that doesn't exist elsewhere. What key issues do you think the Commonwealth should be focusing on? I don't think the Commonwealth should try to become a power block. I don't think it should try to resolve the world's problems. But I think it has two great strengths. First of all, it's a forum for dialogue, informal dialogue amongst people who are basically friends, but who share certain values. And I think when individual countries in the Commonwealth have very serious problems, Zimbabwe is an obvious case in point, then the Commonwealth <coughs> can use its good offices to try to achieve a peaceful but proper solution to these problems because it's able to do so from a disinterested background and that gives it a, an authority and an involvement which is very valuable. And how would you like to see the Commonwealth evol evolve over the next 60 years? I think the fact that the Commonwealth has survived for 60 years is itself remarkable because after all it's the product of the British Empire and many parts of the British Empire were glad that it ceased to be an empire. So the fact that all these countries have chosen, in a completely voluntary basis, to remain linked together suggests that they each must find that their own national interests and their own national values are served, are assisted, are enhanced by membership of the Commonwealth. Now, if that's true and has been true over the last 60 years, which should have been the most difficult period, because it was the period of decolonization, uh, then it should be much easier now with all the countries concerned, equal members, equal independent nations within the Commonwealth, uh, to survive for many years to come. And when we see countries like India, which is clearly going to be one of the, the great powers of the world uh, over the 60 years that you've mentioned, then the Commonwealth is very fortunate to have uh, that as part of its own structure. And what do you see the key, challenges, key challenges being that face the Commonwealth in the 21st century? I'm not going to try and predict what's going to happen in the 21st century. Imagine 100 years ago trying to predict what would have happened in the 20th. We wouldn't have got it right. We will have to wait and see. We already know some of the problems, obviously, are going to be climate change, uh, population issues, demographic problems, issues of that kind, possibly nuclear proliferation. These are issues already emerging. But that's for now. Uh, what the problems will be in 50 years' time will leave that to future generations to address. Welcome, Thank you very much.